Hello world. The pipeline attacking ransomware gang Darkseid has claimed they've been taken down by authorities, but is it all a cover for an exit scam? Cloudflare has hatched a plan to kill the capture once and for all. A new method of unmasking Tor users has just been developed. An entire country's healthcare systems have been taken almost completely offline by ransomware. And the elusive chip shortage is now starting to actually affect prices of tech. That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. The disruption caused by the Colonial Pipeline ransomware situation may have been resolved, but that isn't where the story ends for Darkseid, the cybercrime group responsible for this mess. Darkseid now seems to be shutting down their operations, but the reasons why just don't seem to add up. They claim their servers have been seized by law enforcement, though usually when law enforcement makes seizures like this, it's accompanied with some kind of press release, but in this case, there isn't one. The group also says that their cryptocurrency has been seized from their servers and transfers to an unknown address. You would expect an experienced cybercrime group to not store their crypto on exchanges or have their private keys stored online. For their crypto to have been seized in this way, they will either have been extremely negligent or they're just not being truthful. Darkseid is also handing out decryption keys to all of their victims who haven't yet paid up. It's a strange situation, and it sounds like this may all be part of some carefully orchestrated exit scam, meaning they're shutting down on their own volition and keeping any crypto they have left over for themselves rather than paying their affiliates, all in an effort to just try and get the heat off them. They've made themselves public enemy number one in the last week. If they were caught, you can bet they'd be imprisoned for years. My best guess is that they're just trying to torch the whole dark side brand, go dark for a while and then pop up later under a different name. I could be wrong, of course, but their story with all the information we have right now just simply doesn't make any sense to me. In fact, major cybercrime forums are now starting to ban ransomware themselves. The Exploit Forum, a cybercrime marketplace, has announced that all posts relating to ransomware will now be deleted. Exploit admins say this is because ransomware attracts too much attention. You see, they're not doing this out of the kindness of their hearts. This is a business decision. Sure, they profit from ransomware, but at the risk of angering the FBI and just getting completely shut down, hmm, they, they'd, they'd rather pass. Smart move, I reckon. Cloudflare wants to kill captures once and for all. Their blog post says they want to end this madness, as according to their calculations, there are 4.6 billion internet users, and if each person completes a capture once every 10 days and takes 32 seconds to do so, then we're collectively wasting 500 human years every day completing captures. Though 32 seconds to complete a capture, that's rather slow. Who is the test group for this? A gaggle of inebriated grandmas? Anyway, point being, captures are annoying. Cloudflare wants to fix the issue by using security keys instead of those challenges. The idea is, upon being accused of being a robot, you simply plug in your security key, which itself would act as the validation. This would only take a fraction of the time as opposed to one of those security challenges. At first, they're only supporting a handful of security keys, and that's the real caveat here. As in this scenario, the key only proves that its certificate has been signed by the manufacturer. So the manufacturer of each type of key has to be individually approved by Cloudflare. If you have a security key from a non-Cloudflare Cloudflare approved manufacturer, it just won't work. You can give this a go over at cloudflarechallenge.com. It's still in its experimental stage, though I'm sure we'll start noticing it in the wild over the next few months. So would you prefer this to what we've had to deal with all these years? Let me know in those comments. Personally, I don't think I'm sold on the idea just yet. If I'm going to have to log in somewhere, I know I'll have to go and grab my security key, so I don't really see it as much of a hassle. But if I'm lying on my sofa with my laptop in my face and some website has the audacity to tell me to go and walk across the room to grab my key, I'd probably just rather take the 10 seconds to complete the capture the old fashioned way. I know you can get security keys you keep plugged in and you just tap. And to be fair, I do think the direction we're heading in is passwordless. Whether that means we'll all have security keys in a few years or some other passwordless authentication, I don't know, but as it stands, I'll probably stick with captures as they are, for now at least. Let me know what you think of the idea down in the comments, for or against. A novel method of unmasking Tor users has just been developed. It's called Scheme Flooding and works on the basis of identifying which applications you have installed on your PC and building a unique profile of your computer based on those. It does this using custom URL scheme handlers. Sounds complex, but it, it, it's really not. You've probably seen those application-specific URLs which are used to open certain applications via a link. For example, Skype colon slash slash in your address bar will ask you to open Skype. The same works for Spotify, Discord, and 
tons of applications. Using these specific URLs, a website can tell if you have a certain app installed without even opening the specific application. If it detects a prompt has appeared in your browser, it knows you have the app. If you had a list of applications installed on someone's PC, you could use that list of applications to uniquely identify them because the chances of someone else having exactly the same applications installed as they do are going to be rather slim. The researchers have made schemeflood.com to demonstrate this. It'll take a few seconds to build a list of the applications you have, then once it's done, it'll give you a unique identifier. My identifier was only seen twice in tens of thousands of tests, so it is pretty unique. The problem is that this works across browsers, of course. I gave it a go in Chrome and in Tor and got exactly the same ID. So even if Tor is completely anonymous, an adversary could unmask a Tor user if they got them to visit a site on the clear web they controlled and then a site on Tor they controlled. Of course, that's a little involved and requires some planning on the part of an attacker. But if you're a valuable enough target, it's probably not that difficult in practice. If you like hearing about cybersecurity news, make sure to let me know by hitting a like and turn on those sub notifications so you're notified as soon as new episodes go live. Ireland's national healthcare provider has been the victim of a crippling ransomware attack. The country's healthcare computer systems have been taken almost completely offline, meaning they've had to resort to pen and paper. A $20 million ransom has been demanded by the ransomware group, which the Irish government have so far refused to pay. I'm getting a bit of deja vu here. This reminds me of the attack on the NHS here in the UK a couple years back, when WannaCry caused mayhem for hospitals. That ended up costing millions, though of course it's a lot worse when there's a whole, you know, pandemic going on. The Russian ransomware group Conti is being blamed for all of this. 700 gigabytes of data, including unencrypted patient inflow, has been stolen, which Conti is threatening to release if they don't get their $20 million. Conti's general game plan is to use phishing attacks to install Trojans, which provide them initial access to a network. From there, they'll spend some time spreading their malware throughout the network and harvesting as much data as possible. Once they've grabbed as much data as they can and spread their malware as far as possible, they'll initiate the next stage of the attack, encrypting everything and demanding Bitcoin from the victim, or else they won't get their decryption keys and instead the data will be made public for the world to see. You've probably heard a bunch about the chip shortage, caused by a bit of a perfect storm made up of the pandemic mixed in with trade wars, along with various environmental factors sprinkled on top, plus the fact that we're now putting chips in pretty much everything these days. Anyhow, the shortage is now starting to affect actual product prices. It started with televisions. The prices of some models have increased by more than 30% when compared to their price last year. Anything with a display in it is quite vulnerable. Reason being that display-related chips aren't really that advanced and cutting edge. There's nothing wrong with that, they work perfectly fine as they are, but because factories are now starting to focus on ramping up production of more advanced and more valuable chips, the ones using older technology are feeling a little left out, and the supply of them is really starting to dry up. It's not only televisions that will be affected, console plebs will have difficulty buying PS5s all the way through 2022 apparently. Also, if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you'll know I run Maltronics.com, which you should totally check out by the way, trusted by security researchers and educational institutions institutions, we sell a variety of pen testing products. Anyway, even some of the chips we use in our products have doubled if not tripled in price. At the moment, we're eating the cost, but if things get really bad, prices may just have to go up. And that's another reason for checking out Miletronics.com today. Buy them whilst you can, along with discount code SATONIC for a spicy 10% off. That's probably the smoothest ad I think I've ever done. If you like the weak web format and want to see more, make sure to let me know in those comments and turn those sub notifications on so you don't miss any hacking news. For behind the scenes footage, do make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.